pounds, and that's only 10 million pounds less than it cost their rivals P&O to build the Royal Princess. More than 80% of that money will be spent on replacing the Queen's aging steam turbine engines with an all diesel electric plant. Workmen were already stripping out non-essential machineries and everything will be removed through a large hole cut in her superstructure, including her twin 250 foot long propellers and both the main control rooms. In just a few hours from now, Chief Engineer John Chillingworth will press the finished with engines button, but this time there'll be no more full steam ahead. Well, as I've been on the ship for 15 years, I started off as a, an apprentice with Kinard Line on here, and it's been the major part of my working career. It'll be sad to see uh, the steam plant go, but there's a new challenge with the new plant. Have they been a lot of trouble to you, though, over the years? No more than any other ship, but unfortunately this ship always makes the headlines when something goes wrong. But with a steam plant, it's like a big chain, and when one link fails, it has a big effect on the rest of the plant. Whereas with a diesel plant, there's a lot more reliability with it. What about the engine that's going to be put in in its place? What difference is that going to make to the running of the ship and to your job? Well, we're going to have nine engines, so when you've got nine engines, you've got uh, a multiple of uh, uh, selected this with the, you know, what engines you run. Whereas on this present ship, you've got three boilers and two engines, so you're a bit limited, you haven't got the flexibility. So in that respect, it's going to be a lot easier. As dusk fell over Southampton, the QE2 slipped her moorings. When she returns in April next year, she'll be faster, more economic and more luxurious. And that Cunard believes should guarantee her future right into the 21st century as the world's best-known liner.